where you've carried the tricolor to the US, to Bangladesh, to Thailand, the world over. What has changed from your years there as ambassador, as high commissioner, as foreign secretary to now when you interact with members or representatives from the same nation, what has changed? Well, I think uh, one discernible change that you see uh, in recent years, I would say in the past decade, is the respect with which India has received. In other words, wherever you go, whether it's with governments, it's uh, with businesses, it's with tech leaders, uh, it's essentially any part of society in any foreign country that you go to, I think your access, your receptivity uh, that others have towards you is far, far better. Indians today, I think, are far more respected in every part of the world than we were 10 years ago. And that also comes because of the fact that uh, we have achieved what we have uh, at a global level. I mean, the Prime Minister mentioned just recently, he said 10 years ago we were the 10th largest economy in the world. Today we are the 5th largest economy. In a couple of years we will be the 3rd largest economy. Our GDP is growing. We are the fastest growing large economy in the world today. Uh, we have uh, the largest working population in the world, um, a very youthful demography. Uh, and I think we are in many senses uh, at the cutting edge of innovation and technology. So that I think has earned us the respect of people all over the world. But it is more than that. It is also the way we have engaged uh, on a global basis. Uh, the fact that uh, we have consciously uh, conducted a foreign policy that is based on human-centric globalization yeah. as opposed to a GDP-centric globalization. We have High Commissioners, envoys of various nations present in the audience also and there are lots who are watching. Are nations accepting this and taking this when we move to solar alliance? Now there is a global biofuel alliance that India is trying to push and that perhaps is going to be the highlight here also. Are nations really taking it seriously or are they looking at it with a semblance of doubt? Whether can India, does India really mean and can we really deliver when you want to stitch an alliance like this and what's going to be the benefit out of this? Well, when we started with the International Solar Alliance, there were a handful of countries. Today, today there are over 100 countries that are members of the ISA and more countries are eager to join. Uh, so obviously there is a certain appeal, uh, especially to developing countries, to be part of a renewable energy hmm. support system. Uh, similarly, when you talk about the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, another grouping that India itself has pioneered in order to make sure that your infrastructure which is subject to the vagaries of nature, yes. cyclones and so on and so forth, is resilient and can actually withstand some of these uh, you know, climate change related uh, anomalies that mm -hmm. we face. W one of the things we are very hopeful of to achieve in our year of presidency or as chair is to, is to represent the Africa Union and get them a permanent representation in the G G20, the African Union or Union of African Nations. How many of those nations are really looking up to India and do you see them trust us because they've trust, tr they laid their trust or reposed their trust on certain nations in the West, dhoka khaya. They turn towards China, dhoka khaya. Now we are going and saying we'll take care of you or we'll, we'll represent you. Why should they trust us? Well, our uh, association with Africa and the developing world is historic. I mean, we have helped most African countries in their struggle against colonialism. Uh, we have worked with them in their development stages. Um, before we became president of the G20, we convened the Voice of Global South Summit in which 125 developing countries uh, engaged us and we tried to understand what were their views, mm. what are their concerns and what are their expectations out of India's G20 presidency. And that was a very important pointer to us as to how we should articulate uh, this voice of the global south under our presidency of the G20. And, uh, and I think from that point of view, um, you know, the fact that we have convened uh, the India-Africa Forum Summit in Delhi, uh, 54 African countries, all African Union countries participated. Uh, the fact that we have consistently engaged them in their requirements, whether it is uh, support in terms of their development, it mm. is in terms of education, training, India has been at the forefront of that. And all of this had been, has not been tied assistance and we have made it uh, on the basis of what their requirements are 
and it is basically what they want is what we cater to. Harshwardhan Singla ji, do you remember when is it that you got a call or you were told that ye aapko karna hai, that you are going to be chief coordinator G20 and what was your reaction? Well, um, let me go back a little further to when I got the call when I was going to become foreign secretary because that was <laughs> memorable. I was, in, I was in Hawaii at that time, not on holiday, I was in work ostensibly. But uh, it was, you know, given the time difference, everybody calculated Eastern Standard Time in, in the U.S. and felt that it was a good time to call. So I remember getting a call from the principal secretary to the PM at about 3 in the morning, which is, which is a very difficult time for anybody. And, uh, well, it was a happy call, but uh, it was under somewhat uh, different circumstances in a different environment, mm -hmm. and so I stayed in my mind. As far as, uh, you know, the call uh, here came was during the, uh, you know, remaining, I mean, when I was about to complete my term as Foreign Secretary. Mm. And uh, I think the principals, again, Principal Secretary to the PM, Dr. P.K. Mishra, uh, said that we need you for this particular, you know, big event that we're having. And that, mm. uh, you know, um, we want you to join this effort. Were you